awesome topics for you this week. Make sure your buddy system is in place. Game Designer Pair explains how to use the friend invite in Forge of Empires. Time for community questions. Marcel deals with Grimpolis players' most pressing issues. Battle wherever you are. The new misadventures of Robert and Tuma for Tribal Wars. News from Rising Generals. Artist Thorsten introduces the art and design of the game. InnoGames celebrates the summer. Our colleagues take on a challenging obstacle course. And finally, Tribal Wars 2. Fabio explains the use of our city's building. As you know, it's crucial in all our games to form allies, whether these be people that you know in real life or that you meet in the game. Our game, Forge of Empires, actually rewards you now when you invite people that you know in real life. Our game designer, Pear, talks more about this. Hello, friends. This is Pear again from the Forge of Empires game design team. I'm going to give you a quick tour through our reworked friend invitation system. Do you have buddies that don't play Forge of Empires yet? Then go out and invite them to play Forge with you. They will be automatically put into your world, automatically put into your friends bar. And you will be rewarded for their progress in the game. Let's see. Uh, click on the button down here and the friends menu opens up. You see this info screen which tells you exactly what to do. Um, and if you click on the middle tab, invite player, you can either use the link here or one of the buttons to invite your friends using Facebook or uh, an email. And if they accept your invitation, if they join Forge, you will be rewarded for their progress in the game. So click on the first tab here again, the rewards section, and you see for every one of the players that you invited, every one of your buddies that joined Forge and that reaches the Iron Age, you will get one of these memento decorations. This is a new unique building, which is pretty good and uh, awesome looking. And uh, that's not all. If they people keep on playing and if they reach the early middle ages you will get an in addition to that 100 diamonds for each one of them and so on if they reach the late middle ages you get 250 diamonds and if they play until the progressive era you will even get 750 diamonds on top of everything else you see i invited this player here you can go and collect your reward now here you go and you'll see you can immediately collect the next reward because he already reached the early middle ages but he did not reach the late middle ages and you'll see there is some progress left. So that's basically it with a new feature. Um, a great opportunity for you to get some free diamonds so go out there and invite your buddies. Okay guys that's it with the news from the Forge of Empires team. Have fun. Do you like our grappler's Q&A with the game designer Marcel? Well you're in luck because we have another episode. Greetings, I'm Marcel, one of the game designers of Grappolis. Today it is time again for some community questions, which I will be happy to answer. Tassos from the Czech Republic asks, what do the offensive and defensive capabilities of transport ships, fire ships and colony ships mean? Originally, these numbers were used in certain calculations, for instance to determine the losses some units would suffer during a fight. However, we will change those values in one of the next updates to remove any confusion they may cause. Achilles from Poland asks, will you add more options to get coins of war and coins of wisdom other than solving island quests? In future updates, especially if we add new features to the game, we will be thinking about new opportunities to gain these coins. One of the issues is that if we tie them to combat points, it would be too easy to exploit. But as you may have noticed, the most recent in-game events already allowed you to come buy some nice extra coins. Susie 17 from Italy asks, why do you have no system to prevent the use of bots? We already have several systems in place to determine if a player is using a bot or not. We are also constantly working on our bot detection systems and there will be a significant improvement to it with the next update. But you should also keep in mind that sometimes it may seem as if a player is using a bot while well, he's just very engaged and active. Eric Pro from Poland asks, are you planning to run another Grip Olympia this year? Initially we thought about it, as it almost had become a Gripolis summer tradition, right? But we are quite confident that you will also like the latest event, the Thracian Conquest, a lot. So in the end, we decided to give you something new and fresh instead. We are really looking forward to find out what you think about the new event and whether you will like it even more than Grip Olympia. Tassos from the Czech Republic asks, do you plan something like the Thracian Conquest as a permanent feature instead of only being a one-time or recurring event? Events like these are designed to be interesting only for a limited amount of time. Imagine having a feature like the Easter event going on for several months. 
at a certain period, you would most likely become bored. This is why we will continue to offer variations of previous events, as well as new events, to entertain you. Chalna from Earth asks, why are defenders and grapplers so massively favored? Is this intended, or is this trend even increasing? We have also realized that the advantages for defenders have become too strong. In future updates we will occasionally do some careful tweaks and changes to make attacking more interesting and rewarding again. Especially with the World of Honor revamp we want to achieve this and motivate all players to attack their enemies. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and enjoy the game. See you next time. Even our very first game Tribal Wars is running fully cross-platform now. Robert and Tomai use it to spice their day up at the office. Hi all! Tribal Wars was originally just a browser game, but now you can play anywhere at any time. Expand your village while traveling. Coordinate with your tribe mates while enjoying the sun. Get started on building your academy from any computer. Plan attacks during a coffee break. And stay up to date with what's going on in your empire. Bad or good. As you know, Rising Generals is very different for us in many ways. Especially the graphics, they differ massively from what we've done before. Our artist Thorsten talks to you more about it and shows you a lot of cool sketches. Hi, I'm Thorsten. I'm lead artist of our new game Rising Generals. And I'm here to talk to you about the art style. Uh, Rising Generals is set in a uh, fictitious battlefield setting. So um, what we have is modern warfare with a slightly sci-fi-ish uh, touch. For inspirations um, we looked into uh, a lot of classical illustrations, we looked into a lot of uh, really old games, we looked into um, over-the-top 80s action movie, so we wanted to round it all up in a style that is uh, yeah, very appealing to the player, which uh, he can feel really comfortable in, and which makes it a lot of fun uh, to blow things up in and to wage war on other players. So, in a, well, we have very early concepts. For example, um, we started off um, with battles that we wanted to visualize the battles in a very actiony way. We wanted to have tanks shooting at each other and airplanes and helicopters and lots of things blown up. Um, we did vehicle concepts that were partly based on Cold War technology, so we have kind of real world influences but went a bit more crazy. So we're talking about futuristic weaponry like plasma weapons. Uh, laser weapons against air targets, um, double turret tanks, which obviously don't make any sense in the real world. In our game they make a lot of sense. Um, and um, pretty much all kind of crazy hardware you can imagine. So that's it for today. Register for Rising Generals and see you there. You think people that make games just sit around all day? Not at Inno Games, where we just celebrated our summer party with a huge obstacle course. So, time to jump and run. So, what is an Inno Games? It just means standing outside of the game. It also means physical challenge. To play this year, we can jump and run. Someone connects it to your favorite place to play. Don't forget the performance number. In between, we get the latest updates and the stats. with all the buildings in Tribal Wars 2? Check out our new video where we explain all the buildings and all their different uses. Hey everyone, this is Fabi from Mono Games, and today I tell you everything you need to know about your city in Tribal Wars 2. As players progress through the game, they will have to manage a multitude of cities, each with up to 16 types of buildings to maintain. Let's start with the most important building, the headquarters. Here you can see all of your buildings, their current level, and if they're being upgraded at the moment. As you can see, there's lots of stuff going on in my city. 
Crucial to your initial success are the three production sites, the iron mine up here, as well as the timber camp and the clay pit down by the moat. They produce your three main resources. And the higher their level is, the more they produce. The farm is also very important, as your people need food when you want them to build and upgrade buildings and then also fight for you. And of course you need to store all that stuff. That's what the warehouse is for. There are many buildings that you can upgrade to better suit your purposes. In this case I will build an attic so I can keep some resources when I'm getting farmed, which happens sometimes. Next building I want to show you are the barracks. Here you recruit all of your troops. As you can see, they are either offensive or defensive units. Words of wisdom to all Tribal Wars players. Points don't win wars, so aside from upgrading your most basic production buildings, don't forget to raise an army in time, especially to farm early on. Here you see the statue. You'll need to build it in order to recruit the mighty paladin. Mine's already on the way. A wall is also super important, as it adds a basic defense level every time you get attacked. Let's see if I can upgrade it. Nah, my level is too low for building the battlements, but at least I can add the arrow loop. Alright, research that. Next up is the hospital. It revives some of your units after battle. And since I'm an animal lover, I also have a veterinarian at hand, which revives my horsies. My riders, I mean. One of the most important buildings is the tavern, which serves as the base for all of your spies and gives you access to numerous devious activities. Like camouflage for buildings. Here, I'll just pretend I have a level 19 wall. The academy is where you mint coins and recruit noblemen, which as you might know are necessary to conquer enemy villages. And I minted a coin. Last but not least there's the preceptory, which we decided to rename House of Orders in the finished game for obvious reasons. This is where you decide to join one of three orders, which all give you access to new units and abilities. Templar Knights, Teutonic Knights, or Guild of Thieves. I just, I can't decide. Alright guys, that's it for the buildings for today. Don't forget to register and see you very soon in Tribal Wars 2.